Just came back in from my high intensity interval running session and if you followed on from the video yesterday, skipped yesterday's training day, just took a rest and moved it to today, took out my bike, did a bit of substitution so I'm not playing catch up and just getting on with the priorities of the plan. But in today's short sharp session, what I really want to focus on and, and the video of today is the heart rate graph that was resulting as a, a, at the end of the session. What am I actually looking at? And really the three key components to any heart rate graph when you're looking at it and what is actually happening and changing throughout a, a session in particular, but specifically with our high intensity interval session. So that's what we're gonna look at today, the three key parts that you'll be looking at post session when you're analyzing some of your data. Hey, welcome back to the channel. Nick here talking science of endurance and everything sports science in general. Thank you if you've already subscribed to the channel. I really appreciate the support. But if you haven't and you're considering it, please do hit that big red button down below. Join a great community we got building here, particularly when we jump on and do the live streams. Uh, we're trying to get them out weekly at the moment. You can ask your questions, science of endurance, sports science, getting into the industry, anything that you have in your mind that might relate to what we talk about already on the channel, whether it's for your own performance, whether you're getting into the industry as a, as a coach or a sports scientist, anything, uh, nothing's really off limits if you like. So looking forward to seeing you in some of those live streams. And if you think you, you know someone who might get something out of these videos, hit that share button down below as well and pass it on to someone who might be interested. But as I said in the intro, today is all about analyzing some heart rate data post-session. Now, I went out and did a high-intensity interval session, more focused at a bit of VO2, reintroducing it back in, uh, but working off some one-to-one -one work to rest ratio, trying out some new things as well before I pass them on to athletes in terms of a one-to-one -one work to rest ratio, up near VO2 max for our on efforts, but then using a 50% VO2 max recovery, so more of a jogging recovery, but working on some shorter efforts. So I did one two-minute effort with a two-minute uh, jogging recovery, two 90 second efforts, three one minute efforts, and then four 30 second efforts. But the key thing that I want to chat about is the heart rate graph that results as a, a, at the end of that session. What are we actually looking at and what are the key components that we need to understand from a physiology perspective when we are looking at heart rate data post a session like this or really any session in particular. So I'm gonna bring it up on the screen a few times, highlight a few sections, get you a bit of an idea of what we're actually looking at here. So when it comes down to it, we're looking at everything to do with, when, I, when we look at our heart rate graph, we're gonna see some ups, some downs, some flat spots. But really what we're actually looking at is the, the gaps or the differences or the similarities between our oxygen supply and our oxygen demand. Oxygen supply being what the body is actually getting in and delivering to the muscles. Oxygen demand being the actual intensity we're working at. So when we have a high oxygen demand, the supply needs to catch up uh, accordingly to supply the amount of oxygen to create as much aerobic energy as possible. Now, not always is the case. The, the oxygen supply is never always gonna be perfectly meeting demand. And that's where we get into these different phases and these three key components. So the first one we see initially is what we call oxygen deficit. And that happens right at the beginning of the session. I'll put it up on the screen here. You can see heart rate immediately climbs as soon as I start running. Because what have we had happen? We've gone from rest to starting to exercise. That's always gonna be our biggest jump in intensity, regardless of how fast you start to run at the beginning. I'm just doing a warm up here, so I think from memory I was running five minute K pace just over just to get the legs going. Heart rate is going to come up relatively quickly, but then you start to see it plateau out. So what we've got here in the warm up period is an oxygen deficit to start with because oxygen demand has significantly increased because the exercise intensity is increasing significantly. So we need, the body's telling us we need oxygen in. What does that do? Heart rate increases to increase our supply. When those two meet, we hit what's called a steady state period. And that's what you can see in the first couple of minutes there. Yes, there's a little bit of variation, but you can see it round off pretty well. There's a little bit of a jump because I did some strides just to get going. And then we got into the main part of the session, which is what you can see there. You can see all those sort of up and down hills through the rest of it. So really what we've got to start off with is an auction deficit period where supply is higher than demand. And then we have a steady state. When we're in a steady state period, the body's working super, super aerobically. Our oxygen supply coming in is matching what we need to be able to create as much aerobic energy as possible, and the body's comfortable, and that's where we're gonna see heart rate stay relatively similar. So you should be experiencing this a lot when you go out and just do your long, slow, consistent runs, your, or your comfortable aerobic base Ks, maybe even some maybe even some tempo type work, depending on how long you're doing it for, but you're going and, and sitting on those all day paces. You should see a relatively good steady state because the body can handle that demand quite well. We can get the supply in and that's where we see heart rate sort of stay pretty similar across a long period of time. Or if you're doing some things like threshold intervals, you might do, be doing some longer type intervals, eight minute type efforts or 10 minute effort. You might see your heart rate steady state after a minute or so because the body's caught up. When we're in this deficit period, we have to get energy from somewhere else because the body hasn't caught up yet. We're not gonna go from no no need to supply any extra above rest to 
all right, intensity's up here, we've got a deficit period, and you'll actually notice this deficit period's heart rate comes up at the beginning of each of our high intensity intervals. So the two minute interval, you see it start to come up. The 90 seconds are really obvious ones and the 60 seconds are, as well. Heart rate comes up quite quickly um, and, and almost quite a quite a fair way over the, over the interval as well, over the duration of the interval. We have to get energy from somewhere. It's not going to immediately happen from the aerobic system because there's a lag time. We we have to get air in through the lungs. Has to di the oxygen has to diffuse into the bloodstream, transport down to the working muscles, then be taken in by the working muscles and used. It's a long convoluted process. It's going to take time. So this lag in terms of getting heart rate up to a point where we can steady state is is going to exist for a period. It's not going to be there forever. But until our body can catch up, we have to get a bit more anaerobic energy in there, and that's what these deficit periods are. But what that does is that all those deficit periods start to accumulate. So you can see over the course of the of the whole session, I'll put it back up on the screen here. You can see over the course of the whole session, we have deficit in each of those those beginning intervals. But then what we have at the right at the end of the session is this sort of curving shape. And you're always going to get this in any any session, particularly in your high intensity interval sessions. We get this curve shape uh, at the back end, and this is what we call our epoch or excess post exercise oxygen consumption. Large term, you can call it your oxygen uh, debt as well. What it is doing is it's paying back all of those deficits from before. So anytime we have a deficit where demand, our oxygen demand is higher than the supply, we typically have to get a bit more anaerobic energy in. So there's going to be a residual fatigue as a result. When we get into our EPOC period at the end, we pay back some of those deficits. We pay back most of them. And that's why it takes time for your heart rate to come down. So what I've actually done in this session here is I finished my last 30 second effort going at sort of pretty sort of quick pace. You can see heart rate was up well into the sort of 180, 185 region by the end of the session. I've then taken 10 minutes of walking and you can see it slowly comes down that heart rate, but it's nowhere near at rest. By the end of that 10 minutes of walking, my heart rate's still up at about 130. And I wasn't walking very quickly, just sort of dawdling back just to as a bit of a cool down, but just really to show you how long it can take to come all the way back down to resting. Um, you, you then need to go and obviously sit down and actually be at rest to get fully back down. But it is going to take time, particularly if you're doing a bit of an active recovery. But heart rate is going to slowly come down because we want to up upkeep the supply through our system of oxygen to overcome what the, the demand is. We've almost got the opposite scenario in this epoch period at the end of a session. Our demand has dropped dramatically. I've gone from 30 seconds on at VO2 max intensity basically to resting and walking. So my demand has dropped significantly, but my supply is still quite high because my heart rate's still up there. And what that extra supply is going to do and why we maintain extra supply for a period of time is to get oxygen into the system, metabolize some of those byproducts in terms of the anaerobic processes that are happening in the, def in the deficit periods, beginning of each interval, those accumulations, try to pay that back and get into that recovery process. And the longer this EPOC period is, um, typically is a sign of we've gone and done some active recovery. So if you continue to walk, obviously your heart rate's not going to come all the way back down a complete rest because you're still working to an extent. If you're doing a jog, it's going to take even longer again. But that just really kickstarts the recovery process. Even now, sort of 15, 20, half an hour after my half an hour after my run, I'm still going through an EPOC process where I've got elevated oxygen supply compared to complete resting to try and pay back some of that fatigue, really overcome some of that fatigue and begin that recovery process. So anytime you are looking at a heart rate graph, they're the three key things I want you to be looking for. See where they're happening in, in the training. And it also is going to give you a bit of an understanding of well, why are certain things happening? Why are certain parts of the parts of the session harder than others? If you see that heart rate start to spike up and you know, all right, that's where I pushed an effort. Okay, heart rate's come up as a response to I've pushed a little bit harder, demand's gone up. So in that little period, I've probably had a bit of anaerobic contribution just to get me going onto that higher intensity. But as oxygen consumption caught up, supply caught up, my heart rate sort of leveled off and it's steady state because then I was comfortable again. But you can see the body's clearly working harder because that heart rate at steady state is a bit higher than what it was before. Epoch period at the end is just that recovery process. Have a look at how quickly it is taking you to recover. The quicker you can recover, typically also a good sign of the quicker that epoch period is if you just stop at the end of the session and, and you're back down to normal. The quicker your heart rate comes down, if you just stop, don't do any walking, don't do any jogging, things like that, typically a good sign of aerobic, uh, aerobic conditioning overall because your body can handle it and recover as quickly as possible. Really evident for, for guys who are team sport athletes or repeat effort type athletes, if you have a quarter or a half of a game, you have to obviously recover and then go again. The quicker you can recover, the better, but also quicker recovery is typically a sign of better aerobic conditioning as well. For our endurance athletes, by doing an active recovery is gonna help kickstart that recovery process. More oxygen consumption in is gonna be good because we clear out as much fatigue as we can so we can get into that next effort, but also we wanna see things coming down reasonably quickly um, once we do finish that active recovery. 
as that sign of good aerobic conditioning and also good ability to recover as well. So hopefully that gives you a bit of an insight in terms of what are you actually looking at in three key parts of your heart rate data post-session. Have you noticed some of these trends before but you didn't know what they meant or have you seen any other trends in your data that you're not unsure or you're a little bit unsure about what they mean? Let me know in the comments down below uh, what do you see in your heart rate data or what do you look for particularly after a session, whether it be a long, slow run or continuous run. Uh, continuous ride, intervals, anything like that. Is there anything in particular you're looking for? Let me know in the comments. As always, please keep subscribing to the channel. Share this with someone who you might think uh, is going to get something out of this or needs to understand or, or could benefit from understanding a little bit further about their data, particularly heart rate uh, at the end of a session when they're looking back on it. Otherwise, that is it for today. We'll leave it there and we'll see you in the next one.